And we mentioned about discussing transfer strategies of clubs. We spoke a little bit about Chelsea. Cassie was saying it's all good. Chelsea fans don't need to panic in the fact that they haven't yet strengthened, even though there has been outgoings at the club. What about Manchester United, who are set to start their pre-season tomorrow under their new manager, Eric Ten Hag, with more than five players leaving the squad at the end of this season? Why are Manchester United still in a position, Cass, where they haven't brought anybody in? Lots well, of rumours, but nothing more. Yeah, anymore. I mean, some managers love to get players in early um, because they just feel they want to introduce them into the squad very, very quickly and get them going as early as they can. I think most clubs will try and do that. Man United have... Obviously, Frankie De Jong has sort of just gone on and on, hasn't it? It really has taken its time. Um I think there will be a resolution by that by the end of the week, whether he comes or not. But they need to get players in. I'd be concerned more if I was a Man United fan because they're... What, over Chelsea, you Well, mean? yes, because I, I think they're finding it harder to get players to come to the club. Because? You know, well, they're not, they're not a Champions League team. Mm. You know, and they're, they're a club that has had the highest order of, you know, being a regular Champions League team, being successful, um, having excitement about the, the way they played. That sort of all changed. Recent years have not been good, especially last season was dreadful for United. You know, you know Ronaldo coming back was a huge statement. Varane coming from Real Madrid. I, I At the time, I said to you, I... I think his best days will be behind him, even though he was 28 when he joined Man, um, Man United. There seems to be ideas of making huge change by bringing in one player. They clearly need four or five. A midfield area is a big problem for Man United. It's been, you know, I, McTominay, Fred, mm -hmm. obviously Pogba played there, Matic has left. Um, so there's been real issues about trying to reinvent their football team. And Ten Hag will have his own way of playing. And if anyone who's watched Ajax over the years, the heartbeat is their midfield. Everything functions and starts from there. You know, they all want to get on the ball and move it and get it around, play fast football. And I don't think they've got the players to do that at the moment. So they have to bring in players quickly. When you look at the players they have been linked with, Frankie de Jong, Christian Eriksen, another one, when you're looking at those two individuals and you're saying there the midfield is, is an issue for them, are they the actual type of players they should be going for? Well, they need technical, gifted players because I don't think there's enough of them. I mean, you know, Michael Carrick was a great technician for them in midfield and many others from Skulls to many others. Um, they certainly need a ball-winning midfielder. I mean, I don't think Fred nor McTominay does that role as well as it needs to be. And they also need technical players in there that can keep the ball, move the ball. Because Man United not having players who can keep the ball is, is a real bad indictment on them. Because mm. they've always had that. Keane could keep the ball. Nicky Buck could keep the ball. You know, we could, we could go on. Carrick, who I just mentioned, could keep the ball. They've had many players that can do that. And I think last year there was too many of them that when the ball was in the central midfield position, lost the ball too quickly. You, you're mentioning there there are some clubs that like to get their business done early you always find that with Liverpool they're one of those that yeah, they do. like to do it yeah. um, this De Jong it feels like protracted transfer um, why do you think it is taking so long is it a case that they have to try and convince a player that as you rightly point out no Champions League football he's used to that at Barcelona or in, obviously didn't quite work out last season in, in the Champions League for them um, but it, well let, let's get this right Nat Man United and the, you know for large periods of my career was it was all, the grass was never greener leaving Manchester United okay yeah right now you've got players who are looking at the club and thinking is this a step backwards which is a complete reversal of how it used to be because De Jong will be thinking, OK, Barcelona didn't have a particularly great season either. Mm. But is, you know, going to Man United, who finished sixth last year, a backward step for me? And I think there, were, there was an element in that within players who were going, well, this is not Man United of 2013 and before. Yeah, This is a completely different football club now. You know, there's a lot of issues at that club to be dealt with, not just on the field, off the field. They've tried to make quite a bit of change, but there's loads to be done. But you've spoken about before, with the Sadio Mane situation at Liverpool, now that he's left and gone to Bayern Munich, you, you sort of said, look, you don't want to keep a player at a club that doesn't want to be no. there, who doesn't see their long-term future at the club. Is it, Can you also have that same thought process in trying to convince players? Should you have to try and convince players, or should they want to come to your well, club? There's winning them over. Let's say say convinced, but there's winning them over. And if you can make them believe there's a project and a path here to being successful and being challenging, 
then you try and convince them of that. But you have to come up with a really good idea because you can't just say we're intending to buy you, buy them, and we're just going to throw money out. There's got to be a sit-down meeting with an agent, with a player, of how you see this club developing. Now, when I first sat down, this is nowhere near even a comparison. When I sat down with Millwall and John Doherty in 1987, I listened to what John Doherty was telling me and who they were bringing in and the numbers and the way they wanted to play and how I would fit into the puzzle. I was excited. Mm. Now, if you sit down a player and you go to Old Trafford and you're having this meeting and, right, this is what we want from you, this is where we think you you tick the box and the job you'll do for us and we're going to bring players in that complement you for what you give us. And you talk on about all the bigger structure of the, the football team and the club. You know, you... There will be players that would be excited to go to Old Trafford who would jump there in, in a heartbeat who go, do you know what? They're not in the Champions League this year, but things are changing. This club is now on an upward spiral. They've been going down the, the ladder mm. and this has been going on too long and they've tried every solution from managers to overpaying for players, trying to break records for players. Look, don't get me wrong, Fergie done a lot of that. He, he broke records, but he always wanted players who was desperate to play for Manchester United. And that's the first and last place for me. That's the thing you always go to. Does he really want to come? But like you say, that's down to how far the stock has fallen, perhaps, for Manchester United. <laughs> Unfortunately, because of the position they're in, um, and you could argue because of some of the mismanagement of the players and the you know the transfers, for example. I know our producer, Tony, this morning uh, has been talking about the Christian Eriksen situation. Mm. Um, not enamoured, really, by the signing of him. Doesn't think that's the key area they should be looking at. But he's also not happy by the fact that it seems to be a two-horse race for his signature yeah. between Manchester United and Brentford and yet this is Manchester United. Does this show how far they have fallen as a club that they're competing with a side that had their first ever season in the Premier League just last season? It's weird. It's weird for me to hear because, you know, OK, Brentford are a team that weren't that long ago in Division 2, as you know. Yeah. And the club has risen like you can't believe. It's now got himself as a Premier League, you know, new stadium, breaking your transfer records, paying different wages. You know, this is a completely different football club. This club is as different as what Chelsea was when I was there, even though Chelsea had been a championship team, they hadn't played in League 2. The transformation I see at Chelsea today is completely different from the Chelsea I played for. Yeah. OK? Brentford's even further than that because they've come all through the leagues. But to put them on the same table as, as Ericsson got a choice between Man United and Brentford, wow. 